cutting out subjects by hand as an editor. Well sucks. But lately we have been getting some cool AI rotoscope tools in both DaVinci and Final Cut. Jay, can you compare them for us? If you would have told me, even seven years ago, when I started editing, when I just was a mere babe with iMovie, if you would have told me that you could do what we are about to do today, my mind would have been blown. And that was only seven years ago. Today's goal is to look at DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut and assess basically their AI rotoscoping tools. For those of you who aren't familiar with what these tools do, they allow you to very easily and very quickly cut out subjects without having to use a green screen. Traditionally, you would have to put, just pretend that this silver bounce is green. If I wanted to do that, you know, and put it behind my head, I would have to do a green screen like this to then basically cut myself out from the background. And honestly, then even half the time that didn't look great. These tools are so powerful, so flexible, and they look awesome. Now, funny enough, today is October 25th, the day of recording this video, which a very high profile Final Cut Pro plugin company just released their version of basically Magic Mask, which is what we're going to talk about in DaVinci Resolve for Final Cut. I am not sponsored by them. We are not talking about that product today. I have a lot of pretty heated emotions about it. I think it's super cool, everything I've seen, uh, but it's, uh, it's $20 a month. <laughs> But today, as someone who loves Final Cut, who loves DaVinci, we're just gonna look at the built-in, out-of-the-box tools from both of these softwares and compare them. Again, probably not a massive surprise. DaVinci's tool is way more powerful, but there is a couple of instances where I actually think that Final Cut's tool is better, and we're gonna go through that today. Okay, so for starters, let's just show what I'm talking about today. Let's go open up DaVinci Resolve, and let's show a clip of what Magic Mask is capable of. Okay, so here's a clip of me, again, just kind of sitting in front of my wall. Let's cut it down so that it's not too terribly long, maybe like eight seconds. And let's just go here to the middle where I've got my hands up, doing a little dance. Trust me, I know what y'all are thinking. Why am I making editing content on YouTube when I've got moves like these? Have I opened up TikTok? So to do this effect in DaVinci Resolve, let's open up Fusion. Again, I have a shortcut hotkey for Fusion. It is R on my keyboard if you don't have a hotkey to open up Fusion in DaVinci Resolve. Do it. Once we have that open, click on our left node, which is our clip, hit Shift plus Space to open up our tool selector and type in Magic Mask. Once that tool is downstream in our nodes, we go up into our window, we just need to start drawing on everything that we care about. So I'm gonna start here up at my fingertips and color in my hand color in my body, color in this other hand, and color in my head with just a simple line. Look at that, it's so cool. Then after that, all I'm going to do is click this track forward then reverse button, which essentially just looks at the entire clip based on this frame and does its best job to rotoscope the whole thing. Okay, so obviously I sped this part up, which highlights the first sort of drawback of Resolve. It is somewhat slow. Now, this is not lost on me. This would have taken hours by hand, and it only takes minutes. It is still massively fast, but again, keep this in mind as we talk about Final Cut here in a minute. If we go back to the edit page, I really quickly wanted to just show why you might use this effect. So I'm actually going to hit option click and drag to duplicate this. Now you'll notice that the background comes back. That's because for each clip, if you duplicate it, it actually has to re-render the magic mask. If you open that clip, that top clip up in Fusion, it has the magic mask, but in order for it to take effect, you actually have to do it now. I kind of did this out of order, so I'm actually going to drag my rendered one on top and just kind of move these down so now if I disable the bottom one we have magic mask back because the top clip has it rendered now what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna take that top clip raise it up even more um, let's just delete the audio clip because I don't care about that in this instance but why you would do this guys you take like a text plus and stick it between these two video clips 
you know, sort of fun effect where text can essentially be behind me happening in an edit. And it's just a really fun effect. It's really very YouTube and it's something that I just love to do. And it's also something that you could also take like a stock footage clip and stick it behind me. So in a nutshell, that is what Magic Mask is in DaVinci Resolve and it is incredibly powerful and I love it, I use it all of the time. So now that we kind of know the effect that we're looking at here and what we're going for, what does Final Cut have to offer? Let's open up Final Cut and let's take a look. Final Cuts is super neutered compared to Magic Mask. Let's go into Final Cut and let's take the clip that I just did the exact same effect to. Now the effect in Final Cut that got added recently that sort of does this, um, it's over in Masks and Keying and it's called Scene Removal Mask. Now, if you put this mask on here, it again tries to kind of do it on my body, but you can just tell that it's it's not doing a very good job. Now, right out of the gate though, you may notice the, the major advantage. Final Cut's version of this is stupidly fast and really performant, but there's one major caveat. In order to do this in Final Cut, you actually have to put your camera on a tripod and you have to have a empty clean plate at the start of the clip and then whatever walks into the clip you can then do this sort of effect on. From the very beginning of the clip I am in the shot which is why it's struggling so much to do this effect. But because I wanted to show you guys how powerful this is in Final Cut I actually did a clip where I started the recording and I was off screen. We deleted those first two clips and on this 599 clip I actually start off frame and then step in. Now for this one, if I drag scene removal over, like, look, <laughs> um, yeah, it looks really good. So really in a nutshell, scene removal mask in Final Cut Pro, if you do their specified starting point parameters, which are a huge set of handcuffs, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, you can actually get some really cool effects. And again, all we have to do is duplicate this clip. If I go to the bottom clip and I turn off scene removal mask, head over to my text, let's just get a basic title and stick it in between these clips, you can do the same effect super easily and it is insanely performant. This is kind of a more simple algorithm most likely where it looks at the first frame and then as new stuff enters, it's then doing some comparisons and creating this effect, which again is why A, it's so freaking fast and B, it works really, really well. Whereas Resolve's Magic Mask is probably doing some literal computer vision type stuff to try to find edges, detect subjects. It's more powerful and it can be used on anything, but it's slower than this. Okay, there was one other example that I shot that I really wanted to test this on and that was I had a shot with a can. So I wanna drag this can clip down and what I really want to see is again, Starting off at the very beginning, I made sure that my arm in the can was not in the shot, and then it comes in. So, I want to take scene removal mask, and I want to see how this works, and it works. Ah, dude, it works so good. Okay, so why did I do this test? Uh, if anyone's ever watched Daniel Schiffer, incredible YouTuber, product YouTuber, like if you really wanted to get scrappy and run and gun and do some product stuff and not have to mess around with green screens and like not worry so much about green screen bounce and everything hitting kind of the back of the subject and just wanting to do some like fishing line, and rotoscoping super fast and super easy like you're usually doing these shots on tripods anyway like this is really powerful this is really cool i could totally see like a marquez brownlee or someone mkbhd doing something like this to have a cool kind of 3d text effect showcasing like a phone or a tech product again i'm just trying to hit you with the info like this is a really powerful tool it feels lame compared to magic mask but actually pretty freaking good. So at this point in the video, I think what I really wanna hit you guys with is really just, you know, 
Jake Felzine, the editor, coming to you guys with recommendations. You've seen what these tools are capable of, but just in my real world working experience, how do I use these? How do I think about them? And what is the point of these tools? I'm not gonna sit here and lie. If I knew, for example, that I wanted to do this type of effect on a very extensive list of shots that were going to be on tripods and I knew the camera and I knew the talent and I knew exactly what they wanted and we had to do a quick turnaround and rendering and all of that was something that we just couldn't mess around with, I would absolutely pick Final Cut and I would say, hey, just so you know, here's how you have to shoot these shots. It's going to save us a ton of time in post, and it's going to be stupidly fast and stupidly efficient. DaVinci Resolve's Magic Mask is so much more flexible and so much more powerful. Therefore, if you were to blindfold me or like I had no idea of what kind of footage I was getting or I didn't have any time to talk with someone ahead of time who was filming said footage, and we were going for this effect and thinking about it very specifically, I would obviously pick DaVinci Resolve. I know, I know, it feels like a cop out. Everyone's like, wait, Jake, you didn't pick a clear winner. As much as I sometimes emotionally want to be in the camp of picking teams and pu throwing punches, like I'm not here and I'm not interested in just stoking more drama between DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut and Premiere. You guys generally know how I feel about all of the main softwares. We didn't talk about Premiere. For those of you who don't know, I hate that it's subscription. That's why we didn't talk about it. But between DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut, both of these tools have their place. They're both super powerful. And again, depending on what you are doing, one may be the right choice over the other. And I hope that this video gave you the information you needed to make that decision. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot of DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut content, sitting down, walking through stuff like this. And if you guys really want to help support the channel, definitely consider being a member. I try to do as frequent as I can behind the scenes and timeline breakdowns of videos that I release or talking about stuff that just can't be algorithm friendly in terms of like Hey, do you want to sit down and go through Jake's hotkeys for an hour? I do that for my members. <laughs> anyway, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for joining, and I will see you in the next one.